My name is Ren Jing and uh, I'm a postdoc in Dr. George Davies' lab. And today I'd like to talk about using human iPS cells to generate T cells for CAR T cell therapy. So the CAR T cell therapy has shown to be very effective against different types of blood cancers. And the current CAR T cell therapy uses patients on cells. So the T cells are collected from peripheral blood and then they're engineered with a CAR that recognizes specific tumor antigens. And then the T cells are expanded before they are reinfused into the patient where they can recognize and kill tumor cells. And by using autologous T cells, it can prevent graft rejection and GVHD, but there are also some limitations. Firstly, not every patient has enough T cells to be used for CAR T cell therapy, and the drug production process is very heterogeneous, which makes it very time consuming and also expensive. So people have proposed to use human iPS cells as a new source for production of CAR T cells to overcome these limitations. But the biggest barrier now is that the differentiation of iPS cells into T cells is very inefficient. And the T cells generated from iPS cells, they're not similar to the alpha, beta, mature T cells in the peripheral blood, but they're more similar to the init-like gamma delta T cells. So for years in the daily lab, we have been trying to use iPS cells to generate a definitive adult-like blood cells, including the lymphoid cells. And recently, we were able to identify a series of transcription factors or epigenetic regulators that are essential for the blood cell differentiation. So in the first study, we realized that by transient expression of five transcription factors, we were able to get a population of C34 positive hematopoietic progenitor cells that are capable of giving rise to different types of blood cells. And using these cells, we were able to further perform a screening to identify epigenetic regulators that are essential for the lymphoid differentiation. So here we use a T cell production as a readout, and we identify that a histone methyl transfer rate, ECH1, that functions as a major repressor of lymphoid differentiation. So by knocking down EVH1, we can have a more robust production of T cell from the iPS cells. So the question is, can we use this information to develop a new platform that allow more efficient generation of mature and functional T cells? So to test that, we started with the CD34 positive HSPC population and did EZH1 knockdown, and then we differentiated the cells into a T cell lineage. So this is used a, a stroma-free system that we recently developed in the lab. And you can see that after two weeks of differentiation, you start to see CD5 and CD7 double positive cells. So these are T cell progenitors that can be further differentiated into either double positive or single positive cells. And you can see that after six weeks of differentiation, we can get both CD8 and CD4 single positive cells. And the majority of our cells now are CD3 positive. And then we look at the expression of the TCR complex, you can see that the majority of our EZ T cells, the IPS derived T cells, they're expressing alpha beta T cell and only a small portion of the cells are gamma delta TCR positive. So this is very different from the control IPS derived T cells. As I mentioned before, most of these cells are actually gamma delta in it like T cells. And then we went on to look at some of the maturation markers of T cells. So we first look at the expression of CD18, which is only expressed in the immature T cells. And you can see that our EZ T cells have minimal expression of CD18, and that is similar to the peripheral blood T cells. And then we look at the expression of the CD8 receptor because it has been reported that the IPS derived T cells mostly express only the CD8 alpha, but not the CD8 beta. So we detected both CD8 alpha, uh, alpha and CD8 beta in our iPS-derived T cells. And we found that the majority of these cells, they express the CD8 alpha beta hydrodimer, which is identical to the peripheral blood T cells. So next we want to do a more thorough molecular characterization of our T cells and compare that with different populations to see to what extent these T cells are similar to the alpha beta T cells from the peripheral blood. So we collected alpha beta T cells, gamma delta T cells, and NK cells from the peripheral blood. And we also have T cells generated by in vitro differentiation from both iPS cells and core blood cells. 
So we first look at the genes that are directly related to the T cell function, for example, the TCR pathways. And we found that our IPS derived T cells are very similar to the alpha beta T cells from the peripheral blood and different from other populations. And if we look at the genes that distinguish alpha beta T cell versus gamma delta T cells, again, you see that the easy T cells and core blood derived T cells are similar to the alpha beta T cells. While the control IPS cells, they express a, 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 a gamma delta like gene expression profile. So, in conclusion, we have shown that we were able to generate T cells that display a gene expression profile that is very similar to the mature alpha beta T cells from peripheral blood. So we also want to look at the function of these cells and the proof of concept. We transduced a second generation anti-CD19 car into our IPS-derived progenitor cells. And then we differentiate these cells into T cells to make CAR T cells. So this CAR construct also has an M cherry in it. So by detecting the expression of M cherry, we confirmed that the expression of CAR was maintained throughout the differentiation. So we wanted to test whether these cells can be expanded and activated. So exposed to the CD3, CD28B, you can see that the IPS-derived T cells go through a very robust proliferation with or without the CAR transduction. And also when the cells are treated with PMA or anomycin, there's also a very robust activation of the cells and the response is more significant than the control IPS-derived T cells. And finally, we want to look at the anti-tumor activity of these cells. So here we have both the CAR T cells generated from PVMC and our IPS-derived T cells. And we co-culture these cells with NOM6, which is an ALL CD19 positive cell line. And as you can see that when we increase the number of T cells, we see a very efficient killing of the tumor cells. And the efficacy of our IPS-derived CAR T cells is very similar to the PBMC-derived CAR T cells. <laughs> so to summarize, we have generated a new platform that allow efficient production of IPS-derived T cells that potentially can be used for CAR T cell therapy. Because when we show that when we transduce these T cells with a CD19 CAR, they exhibit a robust anti-tumor activity against the CD19 expressing tumor cells. And we're currently testing these cells using animal models. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody in the Daily Lab, in the Tristan North Lab, and the Torsen Skelligers Lab at the Stem Cell Program at Children's Hospital, and our collaborator, Dr. Marcella Mouse at MGH, and all the funding sources. Thank you very much.